What's good, y'all? We back. We got a Green Bay fan guest for y'all today. Matter of fact, let's just hop right into it. Yo, 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 this is Roof Service, it's your boy Jay Smooth. It's your boy Showtime Sticks. Listen, y'all, we got a special guest here today, my boy Hollywood. Go ahead and let's give him a shout out. Hollywood, what's up, big dog? Oh, <laughs> it's Pack oh, Nation. Stand just just up. so y'all know, he's a Packers fan, so go ahead and drop them he hate content. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> nah, he's not playing. What's up, man? How, how are you? All How's good. everything going with you? Trust me. Ah oh, man, everything's blessed, man. I can't complain, man. You know, we're riding this two and one record right now. Nothing too fancy, just enough to get by. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now nah, we we gonna get to your Packers here in a minute, but uh, uh, first let's, let's go ahead and talk about you, man. How'd you become a Packers fan, and what was that journey like for you? Uh, honestly, it's crazy. I'm from LA, right? So I'm not supposed to be a Packers fan, but um, I grew up in a household where my mom was a Niners fan, dad was a Cowboys fan. And I don't pick teams because my parents go for them. I pick my own team, right? Mm -hmm. And they always wound up playing the green team on, on, you know, Fox, NFL Fox. And so you always see the Cowboys. You always see the 49ers. And there's this green team. And I was like, you know, I'm going to go for the green team. And then the green, the green team. team. Yeah. <laughs> and the green team became the Packers, which became Brett Favre, Dorsey Levins, Edgar Bennett, Mark Tamar, mm -hmm. Tony. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying, Freeman? So it just kind of built off of that. And – here we are, you know, A Rod, man. You know, man, yeah, yeah. And well, like I said, we're gonna get to the present time in a minute, but let's talk about the game last night, man. San Francisco uh versus the Denver Broncos. Russell Wilson has a winning record against our team, and he only built on that yesterday. But let's talk about the game, man. What happened? Showtime, talk to me. Man, it had everything to do with Jimmy G and Kyle Shanahan and our offensive line it had that's the, those are three things we need to worry about and they they have a specific order for me for show sure. number one is jimmy g because you know how i feel about him jimmy g for sure is number <laughs> we're we gonna get to Man, jimmy g two, for sure yeah number two i'm gonna put cal shanahan over the offensive line because mm. he can make things happen to hide certain things you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, if we okay. are missing Eric Arm, like, I mean, like, not not even just our, like, our defense part. Like, our defense with Eric Armstead, that hurt. But I'm going to go still go back to Kyle Shanahan. Mm -hmm. Our play calling, bro. Like, the second drive of the game looked like, okay, we might. It's looking all right here. This is looking all right. That was it. Mm -hmm. That was it. Like, Ayuk looks great, but he only gets targeted a few times. It's like, mm. where does the consistency come from? Like, the book is out on us. They know that right. we run the ball. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows Jimmy yeah. G only throws over the middle. So, if you just stack the box. Except for the Packers. They don't know yet because we we be tearing them up. But we'll get to that <laughs> later. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> if you stack the box against us and you force Jimmy G to just do something else other than throw over the middle, Nine times out of ten, we're going to have a pick from Jimmy G. Like, everybody talks about this this amazing record that we have with Jimmy G. But can we just focus from 2020 on? Because yeah. it's not good. He has, like, 18 interceptions in, like, 24 games or something like that. That's not okay. That's not okay. And, like, mm. you seen prime Jimmy. Everybody was calling for him. Everybody was calling for Jimmy Garoppolo. They couldn't mm. wait. The Niners are so much better. Our Super Bowl I odds did. are so much better because Jimmy G's in and all this stuff. I'm like, bro, y'all got to remember we was playing the Seahawks, bro. They are trash this year. Like, yeah, their defense ain't nothing to be looking at. So of course Jimmy G should be he should he should be good in those situations. Like mm -hmm. he's a veteran quarterback going against the trash team. I mean, Jimmy G's a backup quarterback. That's what he is. Yeah, and we've been rolling with a backup quarterback for a minute. And the mistakes he right. makes are rookie mistakes. If Trey made those mistakes, oh, my goodness, could you imagine if Trey Lance did what Jimmy did yesterday? Could you imagine the massacre, the, the bust it yeah. would be? Like, oh, my goodness, he would have been ripped. 
I mean, the first thing I heard was defense for Jimmy. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, you know, he ain't he ain't practiced in a long time. And, you know, he didn't even get the playbook. You act like he don't right, know right. these people. Man. You act like he don't know Debo. He don't know Kyle Shanahan and Brandon Ayuk. Like, they ain't got some kind of, like, come on. Right, come on with right. And you, and you could tell yesterday, like, Brandon Ayuk, he's really stepped his game up. Like, it don't matter who's in the well, game. Just call a play for him to get That's open. Right. And you just got to give him the ball. You know, so I mean, Hollywood, what you, what, what's your opinion on Jimmy G, man? Just from being a, not a Niners fan, but somebody watching the game. Uh, <laughs> what, what can you, yeah, let's see you talk about Noodle Arm. So, here. Let's see what's up. so I have to I have to put the disclaimer out there. Um, I am definitely 100,000 percent a Packers fan, but 1 percent mm -hmm. more than that, I'm a football fan. So I, I speak the absolutely, real. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, cool. and here on the show, we like to say that versatile. Yeah. So yes. absolutely. Um, I think Jimmy G is a system quarterback. Um, mm. I don't think that he fits your system, the, 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 the Shanahan system, right? If you look mm -hmm. at your team, the way it's constructed, it's constructed to have a Trey Lance type of quarterback, a Kaepernick type of quarterback, a dual threat quarterback, mm. right? Um, you're a running team that feeds off a of play action, okay? You're an aggressive running team that feeds off a of play action. Um, Jimmy G is more like – Give me three receiver sets, you know. Oh, oh so cool. yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Crap, the QB stuff like that. So I don't see him as a guy that fits that ever fits your system, right? He was a solution okay. for a temporary fix, right? You had mm. the team constructed for someone to come and manage, right? He was mm. a good manager for what you needed, but not enough to get you over the hump. Okay, gotcha. Um, <clears throat> You know, I, I hear a lot of Niner fans, of course, Josh is one of the key ones that y'all like to put everything on Jimmy. Um, you know, and I, I just disagree with that. I agree with the fact that put the blame on Jimmy, but not all the blame. Like, I hear so much mm -hmm. about Jimmy this, Jimmy that, Jimmy this, Jimmy that. So then my question to you guys is this. Then who? If not Jimmy, then who? Now, before you even answer that, mm -hmm. question, because Trey is gone. So. Obviously, there's no trade. But when there was a trade, um, I look at his numbers here, 307 yards, one touchdown, one interceptions, and that's from mm -hmm. the one game he played and the preseason. So what they're I'm showing like this they, year, right? That's this year. I didn't, okay, I didn't talk about last year or any of those numbers, right? Do we see flashes of certain things? Absolutely, right? But for him to, to walk in where he was at, to the midseason, like start of the season, the the starting quarterback, he didn't do enough for me to say he's the guy. Right? There's there's not enough even even in the preseason. Like if he's the starting quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers, and he's playing in the preseason against third, fourth string guys, why is he not dominating? Mm -hmm. Right? There's I watched I watched the game against us in the preseason. And I'm like, bro, we're, we got four string guys playing out there. Why are you not killing these dudes? Mm -hmm. So what is okay. the excuse there? Nobody makes an excuse. Well, it's just preseason. It's just preseason. Okay. Then he doesn't play in your second preseason game. He plays in the – or he plays in the second, doesn't play in the third or one of those games. And then he his numbers are seven. Yeah. yeah, he played against Houston. He's seven for 11, yeah. 49 yards passing. Right? Purdy was actually the dominant quarterback there. And Purdy's been doing mm. pretty well preseason right so my thing is you you sign you, you re-sign jimmy right which was the best move you probably ever <laughs> made um because then purdy would be out here slanging the rock where you probably wouldn't go get a free agent quarterback but i don't see anything that warrants him to be the guy and to put all this blame on jimmy like even jimmy's numbers like for the season they're not like oh my gosh this is just terrible like People say that when you have a backup quarterback, like if Jimmy was starting, right? Jimmy, Trey Lance wouldn't be hurt. Okay. Cause Jimmy wouldn't ran the ball at the middle. Now you said it back before play calling, play calling, play calling, play calling. Yeah, I think that's and I'm a huge sure. believer in Kyle yeah. Shanahan is the number one person you should be blaming, not Jimmy G because you should have been got rid of Jimmy G. You should have got, you should have, if you wanted to just go Trey Lance, he should have been playing last year. 
when I was at the Niner game last year when we were up 17, and right before halftime, he brought in Trey Lance, and he ran the ball on the one, fourth and, fourth and goal, and scored on us right before halftime. And I said, mm -hmm. coming out of halftime, I said, Trey Lance better be in the game. If Trey Lance is in the game, we're going to lose this game. We're going to lose this game. And what happened? Jimmy G came back out. Mm -hmm. Granted, we won. Close game, whatever. But, you know, it's like you guys wind up playing from behind to catch up. Jimmy brings you back, right? That's how you guys even made the playoffs last year was because of Jimmy G. But you're also playing from behind, which is also Jimmy G. So it's one of those, you know, which one do you prefer, right? But as far as, you know, just quarterback play, I mean, he's not horrible, right? Mm -hmm. you, could, you could have Mitchell Trubisky right now, right? Oh my <laughs> exactly <laughs> the point, right? So I'm not I'm, – the numbers are not like – but now I will tell you this, though. Your third down conversions, that's your issue. That's your issue. As on the season, you have a 35 percent, 35 percent on the season right now on third, third down conversions. OK, just yesterday. Where is it at? Yesterday, you guys were. Eight for 17. Mm. <clears throat> no, I'm sorry. That must happen. That, yeah, I'm, I'm about sorry. to say we was like, oh, for that, a that long, was Chicago, long that was Chicago game. game. I'm sorry. You guys yeah. were one for 10 yesterday. Yeah, there we go. One mm. for 10 yesterday. But even Chicago, 8 for 17, Seattle, you guys were 6 for 15, right? Your third mm -hmm. down conversion rates are low, okay? Yep. And so that's okay. what your issue and, – and, and part of the reason why is because you're doing third and longs, right? I got a holding call here, a false mm -hmm. start here, incomplete on first and second down, right? There's yep. no reason why you guys, you guys average – where is it? For the season, you guys average 151 yards on the ground per game. You average 172 through the air, right? I'm running the ball. If I average 150 for three games, I'm running the ball. Yeah. Right? Yeah. With Debo, you you guys, your, your running back situation is bad. We, we get it, right? You're playing a carousel. You go in. Mm. No, you go in. No, you go in. No, you – like, everybody's injured. Baltimore had this issue last year, right? It is what it yeah. is. But you got to find a way because you have enough backs. You have five backs – that can all break because I'm looking at the dude. Yes, it was a Wilson or somebody, and I'm like, who is that? Yeah, just Wilson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who is that? Right. And so that's the beautiful thing about your offensive line and your offense is you can bring in somebody who nobody knows and they can dominate. Right. So I think mm -hmm. for you guys, Shanahan needs to do better in his play calling. Do not like have your quarterbacks running up the middle, and if you do, yeah. make sure they split. Right. Um, but I, but I believe you need a quarterback, a dual quarterback for the offense that he wants to run ultimately. Mm -hmm. Okay, man. Well, let me address. Man, them, I think I'm, let me address some of them, uh, them trade things, right, real quick. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. I know, I know, so, you've been uh, itching to talk about that. So, <laughs> <laughs> like nobody's business. Uh, so you said you didn't see much from Trey that would warrant him being able to be a starting quarterback right now. Um, well, as far as the, as far as the numbers go, I believe as that far as the numbers go. Yeah, that's fine. Well, okay, I'm saying so. if, if, if you want him to be your starting quarterback, I'm sorry. Last year is when you should have threw him in. When you guys were losing, I think you guys were like five that. and eight or something like that, whatever your record was. We were, we were three and five when things started to turn around. I agree with that 100%. I'm on record saying that yeah. oh, he should have played last year because I'm, I'm a firm believer in if you're going to give up everything that you did, what are we waiting for then, especially if this kid's number one right, problem right. is reps. Correct. So if his number one problem is reps, and what are we holding on for and holding his hand and waiting? I want you to see this first and do all that is ev literally everything else other than playing football. And that doesn't make sense to me. So I 100% right. agree with you on that. But um, I don't care what quarterback you are. If every game you play is three, four months apart, there's no way you're going to be consistent. Please tell me somebody who. Because his first start came out of nowhere because right. Jimmy got injured. Gotcha. His next start was at the end of the season in a must-win game, and he won, where he went 16 for 24 passing, two touchdowns and an interception. That shows a lot from, a, at the time, a 21-year-old kid who ain't played at all, and that's random. Mm -hmm. And then you come into the season thinking stuff going to happen. I really don't put too much stock in preseason because you, you mentioned, for one, you mentioned Kyle Shanahan and his, is our problem. You think he's going to show something in preseason? 
he gonna call the most basic of the most basic, and you say he was going against third strings. Or what starters did he have out there? None. Kittle and them wasn't playing. Debo and them wasn't playing. They played but that his, last. His arm is still playing though. By the way. So yeah, his, yeah, yeah. His I mean, arm is still that, playing. That's a fair but, point. Okay. Okay, but you said he went a seven for eleven and forty nine yards. But you said Brock Purdy and them looked pretty good. Well, they played more. Trey only played a couple. He only played a couple. A couple possessions. How much more could he get out of it? And then when he played against, and then that first preseason game when we were at home against y'all, I was there. He threw a bomb. He did. touchdown. He did. Easy. So like you said about our team being constructed a certain way, it's constructed for Trey Lance for sure because we got players like Danny Gray, the person he threw that bomb right. to. He's going to be irrelevant yeah. now because Jimmy doesn't throw those plays. And that's and that's Danny Gray's, like, basically his only strength is going deep. And he, he's yeah. starting to become a little bit more shorthanded, but he hasn't played at all. So that puts us in a bind. Fair point. So now we can't throw deep. Everyone knows it. It's like, okay. And he, then he talked about third down uh, conversions. Trey was 47%. Jimmy isn't. His is like 20-something. That, that third down conversion rate before was way higher because of Trey, because of the running. Now, I don't, I don't agree with him running through the tackles. That's what it pissed me off right. because I don't think you should ever – I don't care what your quarterback is. I don't care if it's Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, none of them. I don't think you should be calling five wide and then running him through the – if you're going to run him, at least give him more blockers, not five wide. I'm going to trick you and run – my big quarterback who I've just been doing this with every game, like we don't know what's coming on second and eight. Thanks. That four yards. Now our whole season is a huge question mark. But, uh, yeah, I had, I had to address that part. And then the other thing you said was, uh, Ray, you said um, we have a whole bunch of running backs that we just cycle out, cycle in and out all the time. Well, there's one thing I will give Kyle Shanahan credit for is he knows how to raise a, a, a running back. I don't know about quarterbacks but he definitely knows how to raise a running back. Yeah. yeah. I know. Nah, I think you, you guys made both some fair points. Um, I do want to touch on though, uh, when you Hollywood mentioned about Trey Lance playing against lesser competition, but still producing those big numbers kind of takes me back to his question out of college, right? He came out of NDSU, uh, lower school competition, but he was putting up those big numbers in the smaller competition that still made you say he's the kid has talent. Let's take a look at him. Right. So I, I did kind of expect some big numbers in some of the preseason games, but again, the play calling, you know, is it hindering his development a little bit? You know, there's some questions there. So, but I think you guys both made some good points. Trey Lance, I think does have a lot of talent. It's just not being utilized consistently enough uh, because of the play calling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, when you think of, for example, you know, I had Niner fans tell me the Chicago game was like, oh, well, the weather was bad, blah, 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 blah. That's the reason mm -hmm. why. The funny thing about that, and I told people this last year, NFC Championship game, I mean, uh, the NFC Divisional game when we played you guys, I said that is the one team I did not want to play at home in that weather because they are built mm -hmm. for, for weather like that. Yeah, they run are. They aggressive are. and they have the bodies to, to, to dominate. And so yeah. when I look at the Chicago game, I'm like, oh, this is made for San Francisco. And you yeah. got a guy, a quarterback that can actually scramble to where he doesn't have to throw it through the air through that, right? He can that's another weapon right there with him, mm -hmm. Debo, and all the running backs that you do have with that offensive line that you guys have. That's yeah. another that's another problem to have. So to say the weather was the issue, like the other team has to play in that weather too, right? Fact. Let we 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 get the mindset of because they're the Chicago Bears and they play in that more often than we do that they right. don't have the same issues that we have, right? Like even Green Bay yesterday, we played in Tampa. It was super hot and humid. My guy was on the sidelines throwing up. Right? We're not used to that. Right? Right. But, the other team still has to play in that, right? right? And you don't know they just because you played in that, you know, eight times a year or seven times a year it doesn't necessarily mean that today, it it just feels normal. Today right. it could be super hot for you, right? Yeah. And so the Trey the the Trey Lance effect, right? 
I think he's the best thing for you. He has the big arm. Uh, he can run, right? Mm -hmm. he, he reminds me of the Kaepernick days because your offensive line isn't bad, right? But sure. I will say this, um, and I think when you guys touched on it, um, as far as um, Kyle Shanahan, um, him not showing a lot of your plays and stuff early, um, mm -hmm. I don't think in the first three games you guys have done anything that you haven't done before. I mean, I've watched your games and I'm like, that. like what? Because your run schemes are pretty much the same. The only thing that's different is you actually ran your quarterback because you were Jimmy, you couldn't do that. Right mm -hmm. now. Trey will open up your playbook as far as more down the field stuff. Right. I give you that. Cause he has the bigger arm. Right. right. But as far as your bread and butter is, is running the ball. Right. And Jimmy is a play action guy. So mm -hmm. why is that not working? You need to run the ball more, run it more effectively. Stop trying to use Debo as your safety net all the time. You know, and that, that because you're in a slot. I mean, who's going to stop Debo in the slot? Get just put the give it, just throw it, give him the ball and let him go to work. You don't have to bring the running back. Put a speed guy back there. I know you guys got some fast running backs. Put a speed guy back there. Get, you don't. Did you shake your head? I mean, you see, Debo almost got injured the other day, man. Like, I because mean, just he yesterday. does everything for you. I know, and I don't agree right? with that. Okay, like, fair enough. Okay, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't like the way. I, I mean, I like the way that we can use Debo. I just right. feel mm -hmm. like we abuse it so much. The whole league knows it's coming. It's just to Come, me, it's yeah, just predictable, man. Yeah. It's like you're supposed to use a weapon like that every now and then. I'm not saying flea flicker every now and then. A league more than that, but. Mm -hmm. Jeez, this guy gets like almost double digit runs a game sometimes, man. And that's too much. Like yesterday, yeah. he didn't do good running, so they just abandoned it. And he actually did good receiving, but I don't know, man. Kyle, I don't I don't understand Kyle Shanahan's uh play calling a hundred percent. And I won't and I do agree that that's one of our biggest issues, if not the biggest issue. But I, the reason why the play action really doesn't work is because Jimmy has shown that he doesn't make those plays consistently, which is the reason why mm -hmm. we tried to go over to Trey Lance in the first place. He's missed big throws and big opportunities. So if we have – I, I text Josh at the end of the game yesterday. I was like, here we go. Yeah. I'm like, it, it's <clears throat> classic time, Jimmy G, <laughs> final drive. Yeah. Good thing we have him at the helm. I was being very sarcastic. And then he made that one good throw to the outside. And Josh was like, oh, we had some zip on that. He had some zip on Very it. Next play, what happened? <laughs> Interception right on cue. Because right on we cue. all knew it was coming. He always throws a stupid throw in a yeah. double coverage. And see, like, those are the things that aren't Kyle Shanahan's fault. Because Debo was wide open on a wheel route. Gone. Wide open. Jimmy didn't even wide. see him because he don't even throw past mm -hmm. 20 yards. Mm -hmm. Then it was another one. They did the wheel route on the other side because because Jimmy keep looking to the left for some reason. So let's put Debo on the left. All right, Kyle, I see mm. what you're doing. Let's see if it works again. And it does. And he throws it in this. It goes like this. And it falls back down. And Debo's waiting. He's waiting. And then he has to adjust. Just like Kyle Juszczyk had to, that amazing catch. Can we talk about how he had to wait for the throw? I, yeah. I've been trying to tell people, like, his arm is not there like he's not 2017 mm -hmm. okay he's so a problem not, bro not sure. he's a problem and, and because we haven't let, gotten over the hump yet we've had a super bowl ready defense for like four years now and we haven't done we haven't won anything and that is frustrating as i don't know what as a niner fan and i'm that's why i'm ready to get rid of jimmy is because he hasn't done he's the same jimmy what's the same offense we just got to saddle up and be ready for the same niner offense we've been seeing that's mm. going Fail in the beginning, do good at the end of the season, give us some hope. I'm just hoping that Jimmy makes the play this time because I haven't yeah. lost all hope or nothing, but I'm just not looking forward to what I've been seeing. Okay. Yeah. So my, my question, I don't I mean to cut to RJ. I was going to ask a question. No, nah, you're good. Uh, my question to you is this. Last year you made the NFC Championship game, correct? Mm -hmm. A few years before the NFC Championship game, right? I think you made the playoffs with three of the last four years or four of the last four years, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. With Jimmy, right? Mm -hmm. So my question to you is, did you feel before the injury Trevor's going to come in and take you to a Super Bowl this season? 
I feel like we had it. I feel like we had an opportunity. No, no, because no. I feel no, like all he had to do was no, be no, better no, than Jimmy. No, no, no. Let's back up. Let's back up. We all got opportunities. Everybody has an opportunity. We're starting zero zero. My question yeah. is: You went to the NFC Championship game with Jimmy. Yeah. Yes, and you I didn't understand. lose by much. You were in the game. Okay. Yeah. You had a chance. Okay. Yeah. If you enter this year without Jimmy and you insert Trey Lance, are you saying, yeah, now we're going to pass that NFC Championship game and go to the Super Bowl? I believe that because of what Trey poses. And I believe that because of his brain. And when he makes mistakes, he don't keep making the same mistakes over and over again. That's Jimmy's mm-hmm. problem. I believe in Trey's growth. When he has it, and I've seen it already, I've seen a huge difference from when he played his first start to his second start. Mm-hmm. I've seen a huge difference from his second start to his third start, and he only had four. And in, in like just command in general, like he had no touch on none of his passes last year. It was all bullets. Everything was a bullet. Not this year. You didn't see that. He was throwing mm-hmm. stuff over people, layering it. Like he was throwing bullets to the just just to the out man over the running back right on there on the swing pass. He was throwing bullets. He wasn't doing that this time. He was trying to take something off of it. You know, he's actually listening to coaching. Jimmy, is, he's reached the ceiling. I just haven't seen anything that's promising. That's going to tell me that that's our quarterback that's going to get us over the hump. Does Kyle Shanahan mm-hmm. have to call better mm-hmm. play calls in the second half? Absolutely. But there's certain things that Trey can do that Jimmy just can't do. And defenses having just him being on the field makes the game 11 on 11. Jimmy is not the same. Mm. Very good points made there. Very good points. I mean, honestly, <clears throat> you know, I will say, you know, you kind of look at the Niners, man, that like we don't really ride the hot hand. You know, like you look at other good teams, they ride the hot hand. If your quarterback's making certain throws, he's feeling a groove. Ride the hot hand. If you're running backs, running hot, picking up, you know, 8, 10, 15 yard chunk plays, you know, ride the hot hand. It seems like Kyle Shanahan, when he calls his plays, it's just like, I know what I'm calling from when the, when the clock starts and when it finished, these are going to be my plays. And, you know, Brandon Ayuk was cooking yesterday. And it's like, we never came back to that. You know, he could have easily had a game where he had eight, nine catches for like, you know, a hundred and something yards in a tub or two tubs. We didn't come back to that. So it's kind of, it kind of does question like, hey, are we limiting these players, you know, with the play calling? Because we can be so much better than we are now with the talent on offense. We're, we're not seeing it. It's just like something's not clicking on that offensive side. And it's, you know, is it the coaching? Is it the play calling? Is it the play? Like, what is it? Um, but it's, it's I, you know, I do, I do think oh, Kyle does have a, a way of, seems like he's controlling the play calling and he just needs to be able to open it up more and, and, you know, just, just let it rock. You know, you got, you got talent for sure. Well, I also want to add to that. Um, I think Jimmy had a pick yesterday, right? Doesn't he yeah, that's a, that's, that's a must. He's, he's going to throw a pick a game for you. But, 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 also, almost pick. but <laughs> let's also understand that you had three turnovers yesterday. Two of those were fumbles that were not yeah. Jimmy's fault. So, Jeff Wilson fumble, but see, see how we have it. You think think Jimmy had nothing to do with that with the center because this show hit his hands. They did a slow mo as much as I don't like looking at a man bent over, it was right there. And Jimmy, it it hit right here. All right, but you're a football coach, so you tell me you would know more about that. If they hit your hand, does that mean something or what? You know, I think us as football people, when we say, hey, if it touches you, you should catch it. I mean, yeah. Professionals. But, but, the, but under gun, it's a little bit different. Okay. He's trying to pull out. He probably didn't put it under full enough. I don't know. I'm not going to say that. If we want to give it to Jimmy, we can just give it to Jimmy. But let's not – Aaron Rodgers had the same thing. Tom Brady's had the same thing. But we're not going to downplay them like, oh, well, Aaron Rodgers passes prime because he fumbled under the gun. Like, no, like that's something that happens. That exchange happens between center and, and, and quarterback. So, right. but again, the end of the game, you had a fumble. Didn't didn't you have another receiver fumble the ball? I don't know. But about, no, anyway. Debo did that against the, uh, against the Bears. But again, we didn't see anybody talk there. about that. Right, and so, that's what I said too, because they blamed all that whole stuff on Trey. 
it's either Trey's fault or Jimmy's fault. And or I Jimmy's fault. Don't be a quarterback's fault. fault. I mean, but, yeah, but I mean, I can I can blame a lot of stuff on Aaron Rodgers from yesterday. And I did. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers don't be playing good all the time. Fault, that's Aaron's fault. <laughs> but at the end of the day, as a football coach, I you know, and I, I don't like to watch a game with everybody because I watch it as a coach. I don't watch it as a fan all the time. And so now I'm dissecting the game to from, from the D line to the linebackers to the secondary on what you're doing and why this isn't working, where are you going, and certain things like that. And so, you know, certain things when I watch the 49ers, it's like, why aren't they doing this? This is working. As you said, hot hand. I'm like, they can't stop this play. Why aren't they doing this again? You know, uh, Trent Williams goes down. Okay, that happens, right, into the game. So it's going to suck for you next game, the next few games. But, you know, somebody's going to have to step up for him. But I, I would I would run that way a lot to get that guy some more reps. I don't know who he is. Um, I don't know my team like that in depth. But it was Jeff Moore on there, out there yesterday. Is he, is they he, took is him he out decent? and then they took they benched him during the game and okay okay it's not so, like Trent went out in the first quarter like that's terrible yeah like, he gets benched and because he gave up a sack so they benched him i mean it's high standards when it's trent though come on like i mean you give up a sack you can't expect yeah. you there's, there's but not you even said it earlier you say you can't expect a guy who has four months of reps in between to come in and ball like an o-line is different especially when you're playing against Randy, Gregory. somebody who's been coming hard all game, like he's a he man, he was destroying that man. Got Riley like, Chubb, Randy Gregory on the edges, like yeah. come on, like that'll happen to a lot of a lot of tackles that are starters, right? Yeah. So yeah, but now now you guys play what the Rams, so another another D line issue, right? So I mean, yeah, Aaron Donald's like, oh great, no making his chops, really? making his chops. So, but again, oh, I wouldn't abandon the run goodness. because of that. Right. And here's the thing about the Rams. You can run the ball on them. They're worse on the run than they are in the pass. Their front line is built for pass rush, not for run rush. Now yeah, they need a little bit of time. Yeah. yeah. So they can, you yeah. know, they, they athletic. They can move around some, but they can be pushed over if you're rushing out of them. Over. And I remember last mm-hmm. year, and I was so hoping that I was so hoping that they beat you guys the last at the end of the season, because you guys would have missed the playoffs. We would have played the Rams at home. Mm-hmm. And we would have beat them because they went. They they're not good in the in the, in the cold weather. But um, when we honest. played in the regular season, we dog walked them on the on the ground game. We gashed them. But you started dropping back and you let those guys get the get, put they. Yeah, because they got good corners back there. Like I mean, you yeah. should run against them. That's that's their weakness. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. too high playing deep, protecting the deep ball. You know, so because they know they got that front four. So right. so they were like safeties go go back. Corners, man up outside, you know, play a little show. But, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I think you guys would be okay. I mean, because when I'm looking at – when I look at the, the NFC right now, dude, I see the Eagles, Tampa Bay, Green Bay, and L.A. Outside of that, it's just you guys. Like, the Giants are 2-0, and but I think they'll probably lose tonight. I think some some of these teams are fool's gold, right? Yeah, it's I way too early to even, to even too- know because – it's way too early. Last year at week eight, you'd have been like, Niners, please. They ain't going to the playoffs. Right, right, right. Bad play calling in a bad quarterback away from a, champ, a Super Bowl. You just never yeah. know. I think yeah. certain teams you can be like, they'll be there at the end. They'll be there. But there's some teams that are just like riding a little momentum bus right now. But I think yeah. that bus isn't a long trip. I think some of these teams are going to cut short, <laughs> like the Giants. Um, if they yeah. win tonight, I might, I might – you know, do one of those, but because then they'll be three and zero with the Eagles, right? But I still think yeah, but the they Cowboys, gotta go through some adversity or something, you know, like yeah, yeah, I gotta I mean, go through something for me but to this see. This season, it. this season, I think in general is gonna probably be the most craziest season we've seen besides last year. And the last year was kind of kind of crazy, but because I don't think you can say definitively like, oh, this team, that that team. Like before, yeah, we were there like, Kansas City, there's Tampa Bay, there's Green. Like there's certain teams you could just be like, yeah, those teams. But now it's like you can't. You right. like unless you're gonna say the Eagles, right? Like you guys lose to Chicago. Green Bay beats Chicago. Green Bay loses to Minnesota. Minnesota should have lost to Detroit yesterday. 
Buffalo loses to Miami. The Jets get a win last week. Like you got the Giants are two and zero. You got so many things. Jacksonville beats the chart. Like what? Like what it's so no. many eye raises like, that are no. happening. Like you don't even understand this. You, you know? don't. It's not a good season to bet on sports right now because you don't it's know not, what's going to happen. It's not at all. But it's fun <laughs> to watch because I'm tired of looking at fifty to fifty two scores. You know, as a defensive line yeah. coach, like I want those ten to eleven games. Those. 14 to 12 games. I mean, obviously, you want some scoring, a little excitement, yeah. but I'm like, yo, the defense is putting in work three and out, three and out, three and out. Like, I to be that one was in. Yep. Like a punt. That was, that was the highlight to the game. The punters had like in their yards, it was like yeah. 300 something versus the 400. <laughs> it was like crazy. Then you got the bunt, the butt punt, right? Yeah, okay. that thing, they just whoop, in there. I was showing my kids that, like, hey, man, don't ever do this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so it's it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be very interesting to see what happens from here out. I mean, even that AFC West where Denver, that whole division is supposed to be like the whole thing. But division. now it's like it's not looking that it's great not looking right that now. Thing. It's not, yeah. but I everybody is wide open. Like defense. anybody can come through. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Everybody went heavy on the pass rushers and all that for the other quarterback. Mm-hmm. But what about the offenses? Yeah, yeah. The the is team looking... in that division. Well, outside of Devontae Adams, that went and got like, let me go get Juju Smith, let me go get Scantling, let me go get some mm. of these guys that can contribute after losing Tyreek. Grant, you know, Oakland or LA, or sorry, Vegas did get Devontae, which he's not producing, right? And so now it's like it shows so far that it was a couple touchdowns. From, I got him on my fantasy. He's been, he been serving for me, so that's all I know. <laughs> right. I got him uh, on a couple of fantasy teams, too. But go go look at his numbers last year per game. Well, come on now. Come on. Come on You're now. a Green Bay. You're you're a Green Bay Packers fan. What like, come mean? on. But I'm a football fan. That, as a that football means a lot. Fan. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Here's why. It doesn't, doesn't. mean a lot from the quarterback? No. For the, oh, for the quarterback? Yeah. But that's, that's what I'm talking about. He got Derek Carr and Aaron Rodgers. Are we serious? Huh? But, that, no, but that's my point, though. Everybody was like just high riding. Oh, they got Devontae. They're going to be this and that and third. The yeah. problem with their offense is now you have Hunter Renfro. You have Waller and probably a couple other guys that I don't know. There's no reason why that does that should not work. Right. Right. There's no reason why that shouldn't work. Because when we had Devontae with – Randall Cobb and a bunch of other dudes like that still worked. And we only had him. It was only. Yeah. The and so it's like, we know you're going to double team him, yet you still can't stop him. So now that you have Hunter Renfro and Waller, well, you got to respect Waller. You got to respect Renfro. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be able to either, either you're going to double team him and those guys are going to be open, especially Waller over the scene route or Renfro underneath or, you're not going to double team him, and you're mm. going to play regular defense. And now Devontae's open. All right. Now, down in the quarterback. Point. You right? got to. Right. You got to have somebody that's going to deliver it consistently. Right. Aaron Rodgers so, can deliver a ball consistently deliver. anywhere at any moment, any time in his sleep. It's nothing to mm-hmm. him. Right. Derek Carr, he's he's not <laughs> average, but he's not that guy. So you're saying he's a Jimmy G 2.0. Okay. <laughs> Basically, yeah, for sure. He's, he's Vegas sure. as Jimmy G. He, he's Vegas as Jimmy G who can move better. That's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, with Jimmy G, man, it's about that mobility for sure. I was you like, know, wow. You don't have it. For some of those sure sacks. got out of some of that stuff, man. Come on. Some of them sacks that. that we took Come yesterday. On, I think Trey, Trey Lance definitely would have, you know, Ooh, found man. something. Come on. But, you know, <laughs> when you let it go, man, I'm trying to let it go, but I can't because I got 14 more weeks of it. 14, yeah, worth out of luck, yeah, absolutely. Terrible, well, look, man. Hollywood, That's it was a right. pleasure, man. It's a pleasure having you on the show here. We definitely gonna have you I back, was, talk some more football. <laughs>